Greetings and welcome to the Mary of the Cross MacKillop Church here at Balladura, Western Australia. On a good Friday, our church here of Mary of the Cross MacKillop is usually teeming with people around three o'clock as we gather to celebrate the solemn liturgy of remembering Christ's death on the cross. This ceremony is in three parts. It begins with the reading of the Passion. And in past years, our children have always dramatised the Passion story and done it so beautifully. The liturgy of the Word concludes with the solemn prayers that are usually led by the priest or the deacon, prayers for the whole world. Today, included in those prayers, of course, will be special prayers for all those uh, suffering from the pandemic and for its riddance. The second part of the liturgy is the veneration of the cross. This is our special cross, which comes all the way from the Holy Land. And it is the one that, one that we venerate on this day. And the third part of the liturgy is communion, which, of course, we can't celebrate Today, of course, is also a day of fasting for anyone 18, between the ages of 18 and 60 and a day of abstinence, abstaining from meat, anyone 14 years and older. Just a reminder that if you're watching this at home and you're able to find your crucifix, the one that hangs in your home, place it centrally somewhere as you gather now to pray these prayers together. Let us pray. Remember your mercies, O Father, and with your eternal protection sanctify your servants, for whom Christ your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal Mystery, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant will prosper. He shall be lifted up, exalted, rise to great heights. As the crowds were appalled on seeing him, so disfigured did he look that he seemed no longer human. So will the crowds be astonished at him, and kings stand speechless before him. For they shall see something never told, and witness something never heard before. Who could believe what we have heard? And to whom has the power of the Lord been revealed? Like a sapling, he grew up in front of us, like a root in arid ground. Without beauty, without majesty, we saw him. No looks to attract our eyes, a thing despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, a man to make people scream their faces. He was despised and we took no account of him. 
And yet ours were the sufferings he bore, ours the sorrows he carried. But we, we thought of him as someone punished, struck by God and brought low. Yet he was pierced through for our faults, crushed for our sins. On him lies a punishment that brings us peace, and through his wounds we are healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each taking his own way, and the Lord burdened him with the sins of all of us. Harshly dealt with, he bore it humbly. He never opened his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughterhouse, like a sheep that is dumb before its shearers, never opening its mouth. By force and by law he was taken. Would anyone plead his cause? Yes, he was torn away from the land of the living, for our faults struck down in death. They gave him a grave with the wicked, a tomb with the rich, though he had done no wrong, and there had been no perjury in his mouth. The Lord has been pleased to crush him with suffering. If he offers his life in atonement, he shall see his heirs. He shall have a long life, and through him what the Lord wishes will be done. His soul's anguish over, he shall see the light and be content. By his sufferings shall my servant justify many, taking their faults on himself. Hence, I will grant whole hordes for his tribute. He shall divide the spoil with the mighty for surrendering himself to death and letting himself be taken for a sinner while he was bearing the faults of many and praying all the time for sinners. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since in Jesus, the Son of God, we have the Supreme High Priest who has gone through to the highest heaven, we must never let go of the faith that we have professed. For it is not as if we had a high priest who was incapable of feeling our weaknesses with us. But we have one who has been tempted in every way that we are, though he is without sin. Let us be confident then in approaching the throne of grace, that we shall have mercy from him and find grace when we are in need of help. During his life on earth, he offered a prayer and entreaty, aloud and in silent tears, to the one who had the power to save him out of death, and he submitted so humbly that his prayer was heard. Although he was son, he learned to obey through suffering. But having been made perfect, he became for all who obey him the source of eternal salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to John Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kedron Valley. There was a garden there and he went into it with his disciples. Judas, the traitor, knew the place well since Jesus had often met his disciples there and he brought the cohort to this place together with a detachment of guards sent by the chief priests and the Pharisees, all with lanterns and torches and weapons. Knowing everything that was going to happen to him, Jesus then came forward and said, Who are you looking for? They answered, Jesus, Jesus the Nazarene. He said, I am he. Now Judas the traitor was standing among them, when Jesus said, I am he, he moved back and fell to the ground. He asked them a second time, Who are you looking for? They said, Jesus, Jesus, the Nazarene. Jesus replied, I told you that I am he. If I am the one you are looking for, let these others go. This was to fulfill the words he had spoken. Not one of those you gave me have I lost. Simon Peter, who carried a sword, drew it and wounded the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Melchius. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back in its scabbard. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? The cohort and its captain and the Jewish guards seized Jesus and bound him. They took him first to Annas, because Annas was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. <coughs> It was Caiaphas who had suggested to the Jews, it is better for one man to die for the people. Simon Peter, with another disciple, followed Jesus. This disciple, who was known to the high priest, went with Jesus into the high priest's palace, but Peter stayed outside the door. So the other disciple, the one known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who was keeping the door, and brought Peter in. The maid on duty at the door said to Peter, Aren't you another of that man's disciples? He answered, I am not. Now it was cold and the servants and guards had lit a charcoal fire and were standing there warming themselves. So Peter stood there warming himself with the others. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered, I've spoken openly for all the world to hear. I've always taught in the synagogue and in the temple where all the Jews meet together. I've said nothing in secret. But why ask me? Are my hearers what I taught? They know what I said. At these words, one of the guards standing 
by gave Jesus a slap in the face saying, Is that the way to answer the high priest? Jesus replied, If there is something wrong in what I said, point it out. But if there is no offence in it, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him, still bound, to Caiaphas the high priest. As Simon Peter stood there warming himself, someone said to him, Aren't you another of his disciples? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relation of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and at once a cock crew. They then led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the Praetorium. It was now morning. They did not go into the Praetorium themselves or they would have been defiled and unable to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They replied, If he were not a criminal, we should not be handing him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and try him by your own law. The Jews answered, We are are not allowed to put a man to death. This was to fulfil the words Jesus had spoken, indicating the way he was going to die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and called Jesus to him and asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, Do you ask this of your own accord? Or have others spoken to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? It is your own people and the chief priests who have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus replied, Mine is not a kingdom of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my men would have fought to prevent me being surrendered to the Jews. But my kingdom is not of this kind. Pilate said, So you are a king then? Jesus answered, It is you who say it. Yes, I am a king. I was born for this. I came into the world for this, to bear witness to my truth, and all who are on the side of truth listen to my voice. Pilate said, Truth? What is that? And with that he went out again to the Jews and said, I find no case against him, but according to a custom of yours, I should release one prisoner at the Passover. Would you like me then to release the king of the Jews? At this they shouted, Not 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 this man, man, but but Barabbas. Barabbas! Barabbas was a brigand. Pilate then had Jesus taken away and scourged. And after this the soldiers twisted some thorns into a crown and put it on his head and dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him and saying, Hail, Hail, King King of of the the Jews. Jews! And they slapped him in the face. Pilate came outside again and said to them, Look, I'm going to bring him out to you to let you see that I find no case. Jesus then came out wearing the crown of thorns, the purple robe. Pilate said, Here is the man. When they saw him, the chief priests and guards shouted, Crucify Crucify him. him! Crucify him! Pilate said, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I can find no case against him. The Jews replied, We have a law, and according to the law, he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard them say this, his fears increased. Re-entering the praetorium, he said to Jesus, Where do you come from? But Jesus made no answer. Pilate then said to him, Are you refusing to speak to me? Surely you know I have the power to release you, and I have the power to crucify you. Jesus replied, You would have no power over me if it had not been given you from above. That is why the one who handed me over to you has the greater guilt. From that moment, Pilate was anxious to set him free. But the Jews shouted, If you set him free, you are no friend of Caesar's. Anyone who makes himself king is defying Caesar. Hearing these words, Pilate had Jesus brought out and seated himself on the chair of judgment at the place called the pavement, 
in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was Passover preparation day, about the sixth hour. Pilate said to the Jews, Here is your king. They said, Take, take, take him, him away. away. Take, take, take him, him away. away. Crucify him. Pilate said, Do you want me to crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We, we have no, no king except, except Caesar. Caesar. So, in the end, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. They then took charge of Jesus and carrying his own cross, he went out of the city to the place of the skull, or as it is called in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him with two others, one either side with Jesus in the middle. Pilate wrote out a notice and had it fixed to the cross. It ran, Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. This notice was read by many of the Jews because the place where Jesus was crucified was not far from the city and the writing was in Hebrew, Latin and Greek. So the chief priests said to Pilate, You should, you should not write King, King of the Jews. Jews. But, but this man said, I am King, King of the Jews. Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had finished crucifying Jesus, they took his clothing and divided into four shares, one for each soldier. His undergarment was seamless, woven in one piece from neck to hem. So they said to one another, Instead, instead of turning it, let let's us die to decide who is to have it. In this way, the words of scripture were fulfilled. They shared out my clothing among them. They cast lots for my clothes. This is exactly what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. Seeing his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, This is your mother. And from that moment, the disciple made a place for her in his home. After this, Jesus knew that everything had now been completed. And to fulfill the scripture perfectly, he said, I am thirsty. A jar full of vinegar stood there. So putting a sponge soaked in vinegar on a hyssop stick, they held it up to his mouth. After Jesus had taken the vinegar, he said, It is accomplished. And bowing his head, he gave up the spirit. At home, we might like to just kneel for a few moments and contemplate Jesus' death for each one of us. It was preparation day and to prevent the bodies remaining on the cross during the Sabbath, since that Sabbath was a day of special solemnity, the Jews asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken away. Consequently, the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with him and then the other. When they came to Jesus, they found that he was already dead. And so instead of breaking his legs, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a lance and immediately there came out blood and water. This is the evidence of one who saw it, trustworthy evidence, and he now knows he speaks the truth, and he gives it so that you may believe as well, because all this happened to fulfill the words of Scripture, not one bone of his will be broken. And again, in another place, Scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because he was afraid of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him remove the body of Jesus. Pilate gave permission so that they came and took it away. Nicodemus came as well. The same one who had first come to Jesus at night time. 
and he brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths following the Jewish burial custom. At the place where they had been, where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in this garden a new tomb in which no one had been buried. Since it was the Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was near at hand, they laid Jesus there. Let us pray, dear beloved, for the whole church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world. Grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God the Father Almighty. We pray in silence and then we gather all our prayers in the solemn prayer. Almighty ever-living Father, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy that your church spread throughout all the world may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our Most Holy Father, Pope Francis, that God, who chose him for the order of bishop, from the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's Holy Church to govern God's holy people. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favour on our prayers and in your kindness protect Pope Francis, chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by you, their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our Bishop Timothy, his assistant, Donald, our Emeritus Bishop, Barry, for all bishops, priests and deacons of the church and for the whole of God's faithful people, especially all our leaders, people who take special roles in our community. Almighty ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, hear our prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for all those preparing for baptism this Easter throughout the world over the last five or six weeks, especially the final preparations have been underway. May God open wide the ears of their inmost hearts, unlock the gates of his mercy to them, that having received forgiveness for all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living Father, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of all our catechumens that, reborn in the font of baptism, 
They may be added to the number of your adopted children. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ. We pray for Christian unity. In this past 12 months, a very successful event in our community was the Carols by Candlelight. May that event can continue in our midst and other similar happenings take place so that our God and our Lord may be pleased that as we try to live the truth that we gather with other Christians to praise God's name. Let us pray, Almighty Ever-Living Father, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered. Look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's pray for all those people who do not believe in Christ. Those who, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, Grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart they may find the truth and that we ourselves being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God at all, that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find a way to God himself. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living Father, who created all people, to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you, come to rest. Grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you. And so in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's pray for all those in public office in our communities, that God and our Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will, for true, true peace and freedom for all, just laws and sensible laws. Let's remember our own local uh, councillors at local government. We have Bryce Parry, Mel Condon, and long time serving John McNamara here in our own community. Let's also remember Maria Haynes, who's given at least two decades of her life serving in this capacity. We remember all our state representatives, especially Rita Safiotti, and of course our federal members and Ali, and all who govern us. We remember especially the health ministers of each state and our country at this time. Prime Minister.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living Father, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favour, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, the freedom of religion, may throughout your gift be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us especially pray today, dearly beloved, to God the, our Father, that he brings an end to this corona pandemic, that those suffering be healed, that those who have died and gone to God be given eternal life, those who mourn and their families be comforted, those working in the medical field be protected and be given strength and wisdom. Let us pray. Almighty Father, comfort all who cry to you in their need. Bring new hope to our fearful hearts. Keep us mindful of others during this trial. Guide our leaders and the medical profession and bring an end to this pandemic. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's pray for all those who have suffered or are suffering any sort of tribulation. Let's remember especially the victims of the recent bushfires in Australia, followed by floods. There's been so many tragedies. We pray that God, the Father Almighty, may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prison, prisons, loosen fetters, grant safety to travellers, to pilgrims return, health to the sick and salvation to all the dying. Almighty ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, May the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice, because in their hour of need your mercy was at hand. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Behold the wood of the cross, on which hung the Saviour of the world. Come, let us worship. If you have a crucifix at home, you may like to venerate that now. And then replace the crucifix in a place of prominence in your home. We turn to our loving God now and pray the prayer that Christ taught us and that we dare to say. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. At this point, Holy Communion, which was consecrated at the Lord's Supper Mass, 
which links Holy Thursday and looks forward to Easter Sunday. It's a long-standing Catholic tradition that communion alone is given out on this day. You in your heart may like to, as it were, pause a moment and ask the Lord to come into your heart, make his home with you. Father, ever-living God, you have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Son, preserving us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, may abundant blessings, we pray, descend upon your people who have honoured the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, may their faith increase and everlasting redemption be made secure. May they be filled with new hope as they battle through this time of tribulation, we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.